Hey guys, Jessica here, the Furry Family Coach. Thanks so much for being here with me today in this video. So, I actually did a live, I think it was this past Sunday, and sorry about the glasses, guys, so there's probably like glares in them. I just, my contacts were bugging me. But anyway, so somebody had asked me a question because their dog has a food allergy or food sensitivity. And they were trying to figure out what to do. And I thought it was really worth, it wasn't the topic of the live, so I thought it was really worth putting that into its own video and um, you know, having it SEO'd so people can actually find it on online. So this particular person, their dog had a chicken sensitivity, which is incredibly common. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert the footage from that video where I kind of explained what that what what causes generally for the most part these food sensitivities and kind of where you can go from there from finding out figuring out that your dog has a food sensitivity maybe even what it is exactly that they're sensitive to and kind of moving on from there so I'm gonna go ahead and insert that here in this video and let me know in the comments below if you have any questions at all. I hope this video helps you and I'll see you when we're done. Um, Angela says, what is the best food for bounce? He seems to be allergic to chicken. I'm trying salmon with ancient grains. Angela, um, so yes, chicken, beef as well is a very common intolerance. Um, some people some people say allergy, some people say intolerance. Very, very common in dogs because of poor quality ingredients. Um, I'm trying to think of the best way to say this. When pet food companies, kibble specifically, when they make food when they in the process of making kibble they take a product let's say it starts out as chicken um, because they're saying they're making a chicken uh, a chicken based food they take that product and they render it down it generally I want to say it goes through three I believe rendering processes and what that does is it cooks that food so much there is no nutritional value left in the food but before we even get to that part they're not taking <laughs> they're not taking wonderful healthy chickens from um free range um you know grass chickens raised in the open on grass eating wonderful bugs out of the ground those are not the kind of chickens that they're using for pet food they're using chickens from factory farms that live pretty terrible lives. They're taking chickens that may have died prematurely of disease. They're taking all kinds, all kinds of chicken. Chicken that may have been dead and rotted in the sun. <laughs> um, they're taking all of these animals and putting them in pet food. So we're starting out with a protein source that is compromised, to say the least. We render it down. They render it down two or three rendering processes. By the time they're done with it, there is no, little to no nutritional value left in it. Um, and then they add chemicals into it, chemical compounds that are designed to um, that, that, that replicate the vitamins and minerals that need to be added back in to make that food nutrition, nutritionally balanced for the animal that they are saying that it feeds. So when you take a protein source like chicken, which is the most common protein source for pet food, and you're using such poor quality ingredients the body, your dog's body, starts rejecting it because it's not a quality protein. So your dog's body starts saying, oh, I'm not, I can't, I can't eat chicken anymore because this is, this is just too terrible for my body. When in reality, if they had eaten fresh, healthy 
chicken from the beginning, they probably would have been fine. But now that they've eating, eaten such adulterated forms of that protein, in this case chicken, their body is saying, no, I can't tolerate this anymore. And so chicken is the most common in dogs um, and cats as well because it is the most common source of protein in kibbles. And um, so one thing you can do is try an elimination diet um, where you are taking one specific food source, and of course you, you want to do this primarily with proteins, and feed it over the course of three to five days and it, see what kind of reaction your dog has to it. Now, um, there's actually, there's really no need, there's no biological need to feed grains to our pets. Um, when we're making food for our pets, we can use you know, vegetables and sometimes, very rarely, but sometimes some grains to balance a diet because the, the protein that we buy at the grocery store is not the same protein. It doesn't have the same nutritional value as that animal would in the wild because of how it's raised to be, um, it's raised to be food. So the nutritional value is actually different from what you would find in that animal in the wild. So when we're buying proteins and foods from the grocery store, the nutritional value is, is different. And we have to make up for that in some ways. Um, so I don't wanna say never, ever, ever feed vegetables or, or, or grains to your pet, but there's really, there's really no biological need for grains. Um, even with us, by the way, there's no, no biological need for grains. Um, so what I would say is you can work through an elimination diet to see what your dog can and can't tolerate. Um, my number one recommendation to any, anybody who has a dog with allergies is to, answers pet food. It is, it's, Definitely not the cheapest. However, um, and, and Kim doesn't have any allergies that we know of, but I feed her Answers Pet Food. The reason why it is the number one food that I recommend is one, it's easy because it's frozen and you can keep it in the freezer and thaw it out and you're not having to think and balance for yourself. So it's, it's already done for you. But more importantly, they ferment all of their foods. So when you take a food, whether it's a protein or a vegetable or whatever it is, and you ferment it, you actually change the molecular structure of that food. So a dog that say has a chicken allergy because of um, the adulterated forms of chicken that they have eaten in their lives, when you have a dog that has a, we'll stick with a chicken allergy, um, and you feed them a fermented version, which Answers does. They, it's, it's a raw diet. It is completely balanced, so nutritionally for your dog. That the molecular structure of that protein form has changed, and it's different. So the the, when your dog ingests it and starts to digest it, it's not recognized as the same uh, chicken that their body has, has rejected. So um, that is why it is my go-to for dogs with allergies because of the fermentation. Um, again, you can try other protein sources um, but if you feed adulterated forms of protein sources, your, your dog may very quickly form an intolerance to them as well. Um, so I would take this opportunity to switch over to a balanced fresh food diet and 
as I was just saying earlier, you can actually do this. If you do this on your own and make the food yourself, um, you can do it very inexpensively, generally as cheap as buying kibble, especially if you're paying for very high dollar kibble or prescription uh, kibble. You can, even if, if you're buying prescription kibble at your veterinarian's office, you can more than likely do a balanced fresh food, raw food diet cheaper than that prescription kibble. Um, but that's, that's what's happening in your dog's body. And that's why I recommend answers above anything else for dogs with allergies or intolerances. Um, but that's really what's going on and that's why your dog has developed this allergy to chicken. If they had never been introduced in this adulterated form of chicken, they probably would have been fine with chicken. Um, but unfortunately, pet food companies pretty much, big pet food only cares about making money, not your pet. So contrary to their marketing, they don't really care about your pet, they care about making money so, um, yeah, that, I hope that helps Angela. And if you want to reach out for more information, I'm here. Um, yeah, if you want to make your own pet food, I have, um, resources in the group. I have resources on Patreon. Um, and yeah, so there's 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 a lot there's a lot of really great resources out there is the salmon okay I don't know um I don't it depends on what you're are, are you feeding fresh salmon or are you feeding another kibble um regardless you'll want to to do an elimination to make sure that um your dog can tolerate the salmon um if it's a kibble I don't know. I don't know how long your dog would be able to tolerate it um, because it's it's going to be adulterated, highly adulterated. Um, but you know that that's the right thing to do if if your dog can't eat adulterated chicken. You obviously don't want to feed that anymore, so you need to try a different protein for sure. Um, but that's but that's what's going on inside of your dog's body, basically. Um, as a reaction to, and JR said allergies are often reactions to, to diets. Can you use canned salmon? Um, yeah, canned salmon, well, it's, it's cooked, so it's not as good as raw, um, as long as it's packed in water and no added salt, um, then yeah, canned salmon is okay, for sure. Um, so, oh! Really quickly, before I get off of here, I did, let me just look here, yeah, I did want to remind you guys about Patreon. Um, so I, I do have the Facebook group, and you guys are amazing in the Facebook group. The problem with the Facebook group is that, is Facebook, <laughs> um, they censor so much and they don't let you see stuff and most people in the group most people in the group never see anything i post and what you know you're not you're not getting the benefit so uh jr says what about sardines sardines are, are great um canned in water no salt added sardines are a wonderful addition to your dog's diet definitely your, uh, your cat as well packed in water no salt added that's important um, but yes, wonderful addition, especially for the wonderful, you know, uh, uh, amino acid, uh, uh, fatty acids and omegas and, um, vitamin E. Um, in fact, Kim is going to be getting some sardines tonight with her food because I do feed her a frozen diet. Um, she eats answers, like I said earlier, and it comes frozen. And over time, 
under freezing conditions, vitamin E deteriorates. So I know that I have to supplement vitamin E for her. And sardines canned in water, no salt added, is a great way to do that. So, um, yep, yes. So uh, Patreon is over on Patreon. The link is in the description. The I have a a one dollar a month option. It was. If I could have done zero, I would have done zero. Patreon doesn't let me do that. It is designed to be exactly like the Facebook group. So you have access to me, you have access to all the files. Um, and it is a platform where you can actually see the information that I'm putting out there for you. You get extra content, you get exclusive content that isn't posted anywhere else. And it you actually, can see the content. Um, so whereas Facebook doesn't let you see anything, Patreon does. So that is the biggest benefit of joining Patreon. Um, what do you get for the higher levels? So yes, the like I said, the $1 level is designed to mimic the Facebook group. Um, and you get everything you would get in the Facebook group. There are, uh, three other levels. So there's a $10 level and you get access to behind the scenes footage and exclusive content that doesn't get posted anywhere else. There's also a $25 level and on the $25 level you get direct access to me to ask any questions that you may have and you get a monthly group Zoom call. So um, you can actually get on Zoom with me and ask any questions that you need to, and uh, it's it's really great, and, and you of course get everything else as well um, that I already talked about. And then there's a third level. I'm sorry, a fourth level. I already did three levels. There is a platinum level, the fourth level, where you actually get one on one, just you and me, calls every single month. So if you have nutrition issues or if you have um, training issues and you want help with one-on-one -on -one with me, then not in a group setting, but just you and me, that's where the fourth level comes in, the platinum level. So there's a lot, um, even though like the Facebook group was great when I started it, but Patreon, you can get that and so much more. So I definitely recommend you checking out the link in the description below to my Patreon. And um, I, I really want to say thank you so much to everybody for being here. And All right, guys, I do hope that was helpful. I hope it helped explain like where these sensitivities come from and kind of where to go from there. So if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't already looked down there, that subscribe button, if it's red, go ahead and click it and turn it gray, then hit the bell, select all notifications, and YouTube can notify you every single time I post a new video, which is amazing because I post all kinds of great content here, uh, dog training, dog behavior, canine enrichment, canine nutrition, and I just, I can't wait to see you in, oh, 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 before you go, my goodness. Make sure to check the links in the description, especially um, my Patreon. I do hope you join me over on Patreon because you get exclusive content on there that you don't get here. And um, I have a bunch of other links as well. My Amazon storefront, which I painstakingly <laughs> took so much time to hand curate for you and your pets. So I do hope you take just a moment to check out my Amazon storefront and then check the link tree for all the other links. There are so many well, they're not a ton, but there are a few. So I do hope you check those out. Again, thank you so much for being here with me today, and I can't wait to see you in our next video. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.